Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. Star Wars released a first look at the new Acolyte TV show, so we'll break it all down. It's a brand new High Republic era series that they're working on that'll be released next year. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. This is basically going to be our Sith based series in the Star Wars universe. They're just obviously shifting to a much earlier time period. So this isn't set during the period of the Mandalorian, which is five years after Return of the Jedi, along with the Ahsoka series. That's a spinoff from the Mandalorian, as well as the new Skeleton Crew series or any of the stuff they've been doing inside the Imperial era between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. Like I've been doing the Andor videos for that series that takes place before Rogue One. We're almost done with the episodes on that series. I just got done doing videos for Obi-Wan Kenobi episodes and Darth Vader that's set 10 years after the events of Revenge of the Sith. So we just haven't done a lot of stuff before the events of Phantom Menace. Myself included, everybody has been asking for a Knights of the Old Republic series. The Acolyte is like the closest thing to that because of where it takes place in the High Republic. But just to explain the timeline when the High Republic takes place relative to the Old Republic, Knights of the Old Republic stuff, the High Republic is everything before the events of Phantom Menace to about 400 years ago. I believe the events of Star Wars Acolyte will take place a little bit closer to the events of Phantom Menace just because I believe they're trying to set up Darth Plagueis as well as Palpatine so we might see like a very young version of Palpatine towards the end of the series. They've already announced the main cast list. We have a plot synopsis, so I'll explain what they actually said the plot is about and who the main characters are and how they sort of get involved with the Sith during the series because they are upholding the canon. Like they're not going to break the rule of two or anything like that. I'll explain how that works as well. The official plot synopsis just reads, The Acolyte is a mystery thriller that will take viewers to a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers in the final days of the High Republic era, which is why I say it takes place closer to the events of Phantom Menace. A former Padawan reunites with her Jedi Master to investigate a series of crimes, but the forces they confront are more sinister than they ever anticipated. So it's sort of the idea of the Sith rearing their heads again. Because up to the events of Revenge of the Sith, the Emperor had kept the Sith relatively quiet and under the radar. The same was true of his master Darth Plagueis and then all the way back to Darth Bane. That was all part of the rule of two, to stay under the radar so that the Jedi wouldn't bother them. So they're implying that at least a couple of the Jedi will discover that the Sith are alive and well and continuing to practice and something bad will probably happen to them to prevent them from telling someone like Master Yoda, for instance, who's still very much alive and much younger during this period in the timeline. So you think that the much younger version of Yoda would be much quicker to jump on this Sith problem like, ah, oh, we got to take care of that right now. Nip it in the bud. It just means something is going to stop those Jedi that discover it from telling the truth to the rest of the Jedi Council. They announced the main cast of the series and there are a couple of big players in this too. The main character is being played by Amanda Stenberg and she's playing someone called Aura. She's the person that gets tied up with this acolyte group of characters trying to become Sith apprentices. They announced that Lee Jung Jae from Squid Game is on the series. You actually see him in this first look picture here. It's him and the main actor Amanda Stenberg talking to each other getting ready to film a scene. You notice she's wearing a t-shirt from the Mandalorian. That's a Mandalorian t-shirt. Keeping it in the Star Wars family. Manny Jacinto also just joined the series. You remember him from The Good Place. Daphne Keene, who most people remember from the Logan series. Jodie Turner-Smith, Rebecca Henderson, Charlie Bartnett, Dean Charles Chapman, who most of you remember is Tommen from the Game of Thrones series. I did episode videos for all those. And they confirmed that Carrie Ann Moss just joined the cast. They didn't say who most of them are playing. The only one we really know a lot about is the main character, Amanda Stenberg, this aura character. Supposedly the way that the Acolyte episode one is meant to pick up is that it starts on a planet called Sanshiro where she and her sister are from. It's a world mostly made up of marshlands, snowy mountains, and this Aura character and her sister, her family, live in a village that's frequently attacked by primitive tribal beings. They get attacked during the events of episode one and they're fought off by the Jedi of that period. And because Aura is force sensitive, after that first attack, they take Aura with them for training, but they leave her sister behind, so she's separated from her family. Very standard practice for the Jedi to separate people from their families. All about attachments. Not good thing. Everybody saw the prequels. We know how that went down for Anakin Skywalker. That's why most of the time when Jedi are taken from their families, it's before they've been able to form attachments to them, like before they're old enough to actually form memories. That's why Obi-Wan Kenobi can barely remember his own family. He even talked about that during the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Like there's an Obi-Wan Kenobi brother that's alive somewhere in the galaxy. There's another Kenobi out there somewhere. But when the Jedi take Aura to start her training, the village is attacked again. The Jedi are too late and her grandparents wind up getting killed off. And because her grandparents were killed, her sister's left alone. She doesn't want to leave her sister, but the Jedi won't let her take her sister with her back to Coruscant in the Jedi Temple. So you start to see the conflict and the reason why she starts to hate the Jedi and starts down the dark path to the Sith. 
Once she starts down the dark path, eventually she joins a group of acolytes, thus the title of the show, a group of dark side force trainees that are trying to become Sith apprentices. And it sounds like all these acolytes are forced to perform a bunch of trials and fight each other, and the winner will become the next Sith apprentice. And that's their way of working within the canon, the rule of two. There must only ever be two official Sith at any given time, but there are many dark side force users. Like you have this group of acolytes, but they're not traditional Sith. You have to remember the difference between Sith and just regular dark side force users. The Sith were actually a race of beings that intermingled with a bunch of dark side force users that kind of took over their culture. Eventually what happened though is that there was this great Jedi-Sith war about a thousand years ago. Darth Bane wound up being the only member of the Sith Order to survive that. He created the Rule of Two to help the Sith persevere, and thus it's continued to present day. Long before that, when the Dark Side Force users took over the Sith culture and started intermarrying, intermingling with them, it was more of a traditional build up this giant Sith empire and then conquer the galaxy kind of thing where you have many, many Sith practitioners. The whole idea going forward after Darth Bane is that they would stay off the radar and thus the Jedi wouldn't think of them as a threat or even think about them at all. But one of the things they're going to do during the series is that it won't just be like Breaking Bad in the Star Wars universe, I mean it might be a little bit of that, is that they'll show you why some of the things that the Jedi were teaching were bad, like why the Jedi Order became kind of stagnant. George Lucas has talked about this at length. When he was doing the prequel movies, he wanted to show that the Jedi Order had to change. And even though Anakin Skywalker was the child of prophecy, he was meant to bring balance to the Force, the twist was is that he needed to balance the light side as well as the dark side. Like the light side had become too powerful, the Jedi Order had become stagnant and too set in their ways. Thus the Force gives birth to Anakin Skywalker and he balances things out. The whole idea with Grogu's character later during the events of the Mandalorian and him rejecting Luke Skywalker in the Jedi Order is their way of showing you that Grogu is rejecting the old Jedi Order because that's kind of what's going on with Luke Skywalker's Jedi Temple. That's the reason why it failed during the events of the sequel movies because he started to make the same mistakes as the old Jedi Order because he was trying to teach the old hits basically. Like he was trying to orchestrate his Jedi Temple and his teachings the same way that the old Jedi Order did, like play the hits. So the whole promise with a Grogu character much later in the timeline, and hopefully this will play out in future series and future movies, is that we'll see Grogu take the Jedi Order in a completely new direction that's completely different from the Jedi that came before, like Yoda. But just remember that Grogu is only about 50 years old during the events of the Mandalorian. He's about the same age as Anakin Skywalker, which is why we have all those theories about how there might be a twist with the prophecy that the child of prophecy might not just be Anakin Skywalker, it could also be Grogu. Like Grogu will also bring balance to the Force. But that just means that we might not see him during the events of the Acolyte series. Or if they do use Grogu or a young version of Anakin Skywalker, they'll just be Easter eggs and references. Like they'll just make references to the child of prophecy eventually coming to balance the force. Like I said, just based on what they've talked about with the timeline of the series, the closest we get to like really big Easter egg characters would be like very, very young version of Palpatine. Did you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? We've been making the jokes about Palpatine and his master Darth Plagueis for so many years now. Palpatine won't yet be old enough to become Plagueis's apprentice at the end of the series. Like this is meant to take place a little bit before that. So we might actually see Darth Plagueis show up during the series and then pay off some of his research into defying death, influencing the midichlorians to either create or extend life. That was the whole tale that he was telling to Anakin Skywalker. He was basically trying to explain to him in so many words how he essentially learned how to influence the midichlorians and thus master life and death and then kill his master. Like that's the whole idea is that there are only ever two Sith at any given time and usually the apprentice winds up killing the master and that's how you become a Sith master. So that also might be one of the big twists of the series is that when the main character becomes a Sith apprentice, eventually she will kill whoever the master winds up being. And because this is mostly a Sith based series, I don't know how much time we're going to spend on Coruscant with other people like the younger Yoda and the other Jedi during that era. I believe it's supposed to be about eight episodes, but I think we'll hear more about that soon. Based on their filming schedule, it sounds like they're going to try and premiere it towards the end of next year, unless there's some big delay or some big issue while they are working on it. Of course, I'll do episode videos for it as soon as it premieres, but if there's any other big questions you have about the series or what they're going to cover or big Easter eggs or backstory, just write it below in the comments and I'll add to my future bonus videos. Because we're almost done with the Star Wars and or episodes, we'll probably get a new Mandalorian Season 3 trailer really soon too. Big reminder that next year we're going to have the Mandalorian Season 3 episodes and then after that we'll have the Ahsoka episodes and then obviously, like I said, probably the Acolyte episodes. So a whole bunch of Star Wars coming next year. 
Everyone click here for my Mandalorian Season 3 trailer video and click here for my brand new Black Panther Wakanda Forever video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.